This slide cast is about insurances. Now insurances are similar to bonds in that they uh, protect the parties uh, against things going wrong, but an insurance provides cover against other risks. So while as bonds sort of covered the risk of one of the other party of the other party um, not being able to fulfill their obligations, insurances cover other construction risks such as damage to the building that's being built to the, to the con contract works. Um, damage to third parties, as in people that are not involved in the project, um, and so on. So what insurances are, is once again there is a third party who will undertake to pay the costs of a certain amount of money if something happens to repair it. So if the contract is insured for a million dollars and it burns down, then the insurer is, will pay a million dollars, whatever the insurance amount was to rebuild the building. <clears throat> uh, the insurances are required to be in place before the contract work start because things can go start going wrong right from the start and if something goes wrong then you want the contractor to be insured against it. Uh, if not then either the contractor will have to pay for it and if the contractor can't pay for it then the principal will. So it's, it's there to protect the principal as well as the contractor. The insurances are in place for the contract works commence um, and they're maintained until the issue of practical completion. So when the contractor has built what is required to be built then the bonds no longer need to be in place because you're not going to be doing any damage. Uh, the contractor normally takes out the bonds on behalf of the principal. However, the principal may also take may decide to take responsibility for one or all of the insurances. Uh, for example, a council may be able to get a better rate on insurances than the principal than a contractor. So the, the contract document will say the contractor doesn't have to take out the insurances, the principal will do that. So one of the things that section eight in the special conditions does is it says who is the person that's taking out each one of these insurances. It's very important to, to be able to do that. Now this is not free for the principal. The contractor has to pay a certain amount of money every month in premiums um, to maintain the insurance and he will pass it on to the principal. It will be sitting in his um, uh, contract price will include the cost of insurances. So if the principal can get a better deal uh, for the insurances then it's worthwhile his him taking over responsibility for providing the insurances. So as I said there are there's the ability of NCDS 3910 to be written so that the ins principal is the um, takes out the insurances. So the different types of insurances that are typically in the NCDS 3910. The first one is contract works insurance which is covered by clause 8.1. This is the cost of replacing the contract works if it's destroyed. So if it burns down halfway through the works or if there's a storm or if uh, something happens then the work can be rebuilt um, with the contract works insurance. Now these insurances they're not for all of the costs they are for a certain amount so the contract works insurance might be for two million dollars so that is the maximum limit that the insurance company will pay. If it costs $3 million to rebuild the works, then uh, the principal or the contractor or someone is responsible for that extra million. So when you're um, talking about insurances, you need to remember that they need to cover um, the risk, the cost of the risk. And if, uh, say, um, you're building a building and it burns down, it's not just the cost of the rebuilding, you have to demolish what was left standing, you have to pay the engineer to be there for a longer period of time, to maybe do some more design. Uh, it may cost more to do the construction. So in uh, NZS 3910 it states a certain amount for each one of them. So most contract works insurances are for the contract works total amount plus certain percentages. So it's usually uh, the amount insured is usually more than the, the value of the contract. Another type of insurance is covered in eight clause 8.3 and that's public liability insurance. This is damage to a third party. Now a third party is someone that's not involved in the uh, contract. So it's not the contract and not the principal. It might be a neighbour for example. So a situation I've seen once was they um, were excavating a basement for a hotel 
and they took the excavation right up to the boundary line and they excavated away and the house next door started to slump and it was damaged because they didn't support the um, the excavation properly. Now the cost of that damage would have been covered by the public liability insurance so it would have had to have rebuilt that person's house and the cost of that would have been taken by the insurance. The other two that are there is Contractors Construction Machinery Insurance 8.2. Um, the equipment the contractor has on site is really expensive. If it breaks down it costs the contractor a lot of money to um, repair it. It may be that a piece of equipment there is so expensive that if it broke down the contractor would not be able to complete the project works, contract works. So if you have insurance in place saying that you know if this machinery breaks down someone else is going to pay for it then you've covered that risk of the contractor not being able to complete the contract because he can't afford to pick it, fix his own machine. Now that's why the insurances are all here um, because uh, if the contractor can't pay for um, something that he's done then he's going to go broke and if he goes broke then he can't finish the contract works if he can't finish the contract works then the principal's really unhappy so the insurances are there to make sure to provide another level of assurance that the contract works are going to be completed the last type of insurance there is 8.4 and this only applies when the principal uh, sorry when the contractor is required to do some design as part of the uh, contract so that's called a professional indemnity insurance recall that professional indemnity insurance is um, normally covered kept by consultants it covers the costs of um, if something goes wrong because of some error in design so consultants normally have professional indemnity insurance if the contractor does some design then he needs to have professional indemnity insurance as well um, according to clause 8.4